Please help me welcome Carrie Smith back to the stage with Michael Rowley, President and CEO of Stillwater Critical Minerals. Gentlemen. Thank you, Joanne. Welcome everybody, I guess, to the afternoon session on uh, day two. I hope everybody's enjoying the weather and the, the venue. It's a lovely spot. So I, I just have a little bit of a disclaimer to read, so I'll read it quickly, just that I'm a senior mining analyst with Haywood, that Haywood's a Canadian investment dealer, and uh, we're a member of the Canadian Investment uh, Protection Fund, and there's a cautionary statement that uh, you should seek the advice of a registered rep uh, based on anything that I say in this presentation. It's not my presentation, but uh, I'm required to read that. Okay, so I just want to introduce Michael Rowley. He's the president and CEO of a company called uh, Stillwater Critical Minerals. The name change has just happened. It was Group 10 uh, Metals, same ticker, and uh, you did not do a consolidation, as I understand it, so it's, everything's right. kind of the same. So what we thought we would do is have Michael just kind of run through. He's got a half a dozen slides to give people a flavor for what the company's up to. Obviously, as you can tell, with the Stillwater name and Critical Minerals, it's uh, PGMs and uh, some nickel in there. And, but he's gonna run through the slides and then we'll be able to have a little bit of a discussion about what their plans are on a go forward basis. And then there'll be a bit of time for questions at the end. So I'll pass it over to Michael. Well, thank you, Kerry. Thank you for joining us. We are indeed Stillwater Critical Minerals and we have a robust debut in the US in a famously productive US district and uh, excellent expansion potential, which I hope to relate to you here. That was a forward-looking statement, and that was not, will not be the first uh, forward-looking statement. These slides are available on the website. I'm going to move pretty quickly through them so Carrie and I can get to talking. Management team is truly veteran, and you'll see a lot of Nova Gold pedigree here. We're following that same playbook, district-scale assets, bear market acquisition. Technical team is truly world-class, and those first two names on the list, Danny Grobler, Alby Britz, were added just recently. They both joined us from Ivanhoe's Platte Reef project, and that speaks to the potential that we see in Montana, their interest in joining us, the exploration upside that they see, and it won't be the first time you hear the Platte Reef term uh, in the context of our work in, in the Stillwater complex. The names farther down the list are veterans of the Stillwater district. Um, Justin Modru is actually the vendor of the property. He and Mike Austinson, both 20 years experience. Craig Bow is a worldwide expert in these ultramafic rocks. Truly a world-class team and the right people to take this forward. Uh, the USGS is worth calling out here. We've partnered with them now for, I think, five or six years. They write the critical mineral supply list uh, for the US government, and that's worth noting. Um, they've been studying the Stillwater complex for decades now. We're also partnered with the University of British Columbia on carbon sequestration, and this is a theme that you've heard uh, in other ultramafic projects such as Canada Nickel. Um, we have that same capacity, and we're looking to advance that. We passed a major milestone last October with the debut of our first inferred resources on the project. We ran a 0.20% nickel equivalent cutoff, as shown here. 157 million tons at a 0.45% nickel equivalent grade. That's 1.2 grams palladium equivalent. Key point here is that that's nearly 700 million pounds of contained nickel as sulfide in the US. Um, and there really is a very, very short list of exploration projects, even development stage projects, with nickel sulfide in the US. Significant value from PGEs, 1.3 million ounces of palladium, uh, three quarter million ounces of platinum, in total, 1.1 billion pounds battery metals, 2.4 million ounces PGEs. I don't think the market has really factored that into our share price yet. It's a 6.8 million ounce gold equivalent uh, for those that think in terms of gold. We also show good continuity on these models and with that comes optionality on mine method. Um, at a higher grade as shown below there at 0.35% nickel equivalent cutoff, Grade goes up, size comes down, but as you'll see in the, in the images to follow, um, we're wide open for mining methods here. And then a key point, we have uh, 14 holes pending from our 2022 um, expansion campaign, and uh, those uh, are a resource update for us. We are 42% nickel by value using the prices in that October 2021 20, study. 20% palladium, and then on down through cobalt, sorry, <coughs> copper, cobalt, uh, platinum, rhodium, gold. 
Um, significant chrome there as well, but we've not yet brought that into the economics. Uh, so the objective here is to become a primary US-based uh, supplier of low carbon critical minerals, and we're doing that in a famously productive US district. Eight of our commodities have been listed as critical by the US government. Montana is an excellent place for mining, and we've just heard an update from Robert Friedland on his Ivanhoe Electric IPO. He is focused on this state, Arizona, and the Pacific Northwest of the US, and that's good news for us. We've also got Rio Tinto in the district. That's a really good look at our claim block, and it is remarkable for a junior to have a position like this. Our claims are shown in yellow, and our neighbors, Sabanye, shown in gray. We share the Stillwater complex with an $8 billion major. This is the highest grade, their deposits are the highest grade uh, in the world for palladium platinum and the largest by far in the Western Hemisphere. It's a beautiful layered magmatic system. It looks a lot like Bushfeld and that brings the Platte Reef parallel that you see in purple there in the figure on the uh, left hand of the slide. Three mines operating in the district and a smelter, uh, refinery and recycling complex in Columbus, Montana, just off the screen. Uh, big land position, 100% owned by us. Zooming in on the 12 kilometer core area of the project, um, our deposits are shown in yellow and they only look small because of the 12 kilometer scale. That is the 1.1 billion pound, 2.4 million ounce uh, resource. Terrific expansion potential. In blue, you're seeing conductivity and in pink, chargeability at a high level cutoff uh, as a result of our 2020 induced polarization survey. These deposits want to connect across nine kilometers and even to the west there for a further three kilometers. Next slide, we'll zoom in on that DR and hybrid deposit area at Chrome Mountain, which is getting a lot of attention. Uh, we're seeing a lot of magmatic disruption there and the Platte Reef parallels are particularly real in this part. In the center of this image, you have the six holes that we drilled at Chrome Mountain in 2021 and our confidence that we've successfully grown this resource um, for debut later this year. Um, we're hitting long lengths that are above our cutoff grade and then two key discoveries called out there, 8.5 meters at 1.17, sorry, 1.7% nickel equivalent and 125 meter offset from that 13.2 meters at 3.3% nickel. We're hitting high grade in places that um, has never been identified before and we're hitting mineralization that's never been seen at Stillwater before. Uh, this is exciting stuff. Soils light up with metals across the 25 kilometer main claim block. Uh, in the lower image, you've got base metals in soil and it actually correlates beautifully with the bodies that we saw in that induced polarization survey and also in other geophysics. Uh, there's terrific room to grow this. And a magnetic vector inversion model shows great potential at depth as well. Uh, what's particularly compelling here is we see potential feeder zones beneath Chrome Mountain, also at HGR at Iron Mountain. And these areas uh, show a lot of disruption in the magmas. And this is fitting together nicely with the, uh, the deep roots that we see to the system here. We picked up the property in 2017, quickly tripled our land position there as we got into the database. We drilled in 2019, 2020. That, those results are included in our 2021 resource estimate. The drilling we did in 2021 is not yet included. Um, and uh, that is one of our key catalysts uh, for the rest of this year is to debut that updated resource. We feel we've got a healthy expansion uh, in the bag and we look forward to, to working further on that. Drill results are forthcoming um, as our metallurgy updates um, work on our carbon sequestration work um, and some announcements on uh, sale of our secondary assets. We do have two other district scale projects because we were accumulating good assets through the bear market. Um, you will have seen our deal with Heritage Mining, for example, for our position in Ontario. Uh, they're making good progress on their IPO. We look forward to that. Our Yukon property as well, we're getting some good conversations on. Capital structure, we're about a 44 million market cap, which we feel doesn't properly reflect the 15 billion in gross metal value we have in the ground, even in an inferred 
capacity. A um, lot of room to grow just on that basis before the other catalysts that I mentioned. We're funded adequately to complete what we need to do this year. We have about $3 million in the bank and about $4 million of in-the-money warrants that are coming in in August and September. It may not be quite the year we'd hoped in terms of a uh, 20,000-meter program, but we're well-equipped to do um, a small, smart program, geophysics, and that expanded resource update. Uh, it's a wrap for me. Perhaps we'll turn it over to Kerry for discussion. Okay, sure. So you, you have a new resource coming, obviously, based on the drilling. I presume that resource will come out once you get the assays back from the 2021 program. What, what would be the timing to get that resource out? Uh, I would like to see Q4 of this year. Q4, yeah. okay. And then can you talk a little bit about the plans once that resource comes out? Are you intending to head into a PEA or do you want to continue to try and grow the resource, maybe target some of these higher grade intercepts you're getting in the, in the plat reef structures? Yeah, good question. Uh, no plans for PEA imminent, not this mm -hmm. year, probably not next year, but start to tick the boxes on a PEA level of study. So definitely metallurgy, that's always a factor in these nickel systems. Um, also the carbon sequestration, not directly related, but community, you know. Um, the main point is that we see such potential to grow this. So focus on growing the inferred resource and then upgrading that to indicated. Um. And, and can you talk a bit about this plat reef uh, analog that you're working on? You're hitting these high grades. They generally didn't see that in the Stillwater complex. That wasn't something that you, I've been to that mine many years ago and that wasn't normally something they saw there. Um, you know, can you talk a bit about what you think is driving that and what that potential might mean? It seems like a target that should be chased, obviously. It's, it's remarkable, and we're grateful to be the ones that are in the place to advance it. The Stillwater mines were found by direct um, application of what they learned at the Marinsky in Bushveld. It's in the same place in the layered stratigraphy. South Africa then went ahead with developments on the Platte Reef, Mahalakwena starting, what, 93? And then Ivanhoe's Platte Reef and the Waterberg project of, of Platinum Group Metals. 400 million ounces, tens of billions of pounds in this bulk bindable nickel uh, battery metal model with PGEs. Somehow that was never pursued in Stillwater, mm -hmm. even though AMAX did some very good work in the 60s and 70s um, in the basal series where we are, lower ultramafic and basal. Um, Somehow that was not pursued. So we're in the happy place to simply have that uh, model from South Africa systematically build the data layers and go after it in still water. It's the correct place below the productive high grade reef to find this bulk mineable sulfide system. Mm -hmm. yeah. And explain to the audience how a small junior company managed to pick up a land package of that size right next to a pretty large operating company like Sabanya. Like, how did that actually happen? Yeah, um, we were asked that by a number of much larger companies. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were the right people in the right time. Um, we'd restructured Group 10 and focused on our ultramafic assets in the Yukon, and that prompted a, a Montana local to reach out to us. So the short answer is, for all my work building the other projects, this one came in through the info at email address. Oh, wow. uh, Justin Madrew is the vendor's name. He's, on our, he's our geophysicist there in the list. He had watched a bankruptcy. He'd watched the claims come open. And thanks to the antiquated nature of US staking laws, it's very hard for you or me to see what's available. Um, he lives locally. He loves the project. He made the first acquisitions, and we worked with him to stake the rest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and can you maybe talk a little bit about the permitting environment in Montana? I mean, Stillwater's been there for a very long time, so that the permitting regime that they went through is obviously significantly different today. And obviously, you would be looking at an underground operation. An open pit is, I guess, a non-starter in Montana. But can you talk a bit about how the permitting would actually work for something like this? Sure. Um, our ground is past producing. That helps. Um, and uh, you're correct that the, the three mines next door to us opened in 1986 and have expanded ever since. So this is clearly um, good country for mining. Their good neighbor agreement is a, is a template for industry, I think, actually. Mm -hmm. um, they've recently expanded their tailings impoundments. So, you know, I think this is, this is very friendly country. For us, in terms of our exploration permits, it's just a wonderfully clear process. Um, you know, they're clear that this is going to take three months and this is going to take 90 days and we file it and we 
mm -hmm. and we get it done. Mm -hmm. And and is there any of the any of the ground patented, or is it all BLM? So this is it's all unpatented ground. Unpatented. So BLM would be the lead agency then, or correct? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so the program that you've got planned this year, just you know, you've got the resource coming out sometime later this year. It sounds like. And uh, w what would your burn rate be for the next 12 months, and what would you hope to accomplish in the next 12 months on the project? Well, we'd, we'd hope to do more. We're, we're limited by funding, frankly. As you can see, we're not limited by targets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we're permitted on 50 drill pads for five years. Um, so budget becomes the question. We're burning about 150 grand Canadian per month, uh, normally. Um, and from there, it's what we choose to ramp up in the exploration season. So we're drilling for about 350 US per meter. Mm -hmm. um, 5,000 mm -hmm. meter program is comfortable from where we sit. Had hoped to do 20, and we'll see how conversations here at the show pan out. Right. Um, we are definitely mindful of dilution, though, and the fact that if the market continues the way it is right now, it's, it's not the market, it's not the time to to burn a lot of cash and dilute. Um, it's the time to focus on essential tasks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and in, on the shareholder registry, who are the largest shareholders then? Board and management are 22%, right. uh, myself included. I think I'm four or 5%. Mm -hmm. uh, US Global is a significant holder, mm -hmm. uh, Sprott Asset out of Toronto, number of other high net worth and some lesser known funds too. Okay, okay. Yeah. And the last financing, you, the last raise you did to fund the program was done when then, Michael? That was ago. July of 2021 at a 40 cent. At 40 cents. It's a half warrant at 55. Okay. So are those that the warrants that you are expecting to come in then, those warrants? No, the warrants that are coming in now are from the 2019 placement. They're 21 cent. Oh, 21 cents. Okay. So even at today's 26 cent, we got good comfort that, that they'll come are, in. When we, we are actually in a position to hard call them as mm. well. Mm -hmm. um, they've been triggered, but we have not wanted to do that. Okay. And they expire when? Uh, August 6th and mid-September. Okay, so they're near term then. Okay. Very, very near term. Yeah, because that would be key to get that cash in to just keep you going, obviously, and keep the keep the program going. Yeah. I mean, dilution is a tricky thing, right? You uh, you want to push your projects ahead, but you don't want to dilute yourself unnecessarily. And we've had examples where that's happened. You know, the, the latest one I think back to is Barkerville. Yeah. You know, they continued to raise money. They could always raise money, but they were always raising money at a lower price. Yes. Which, at the end of the day, doesn't really get you where you want to get. And if to, your news so. isn't getting you a higher price, then I was talking with uh, Jeremy of Treasury Metals last night. Mm -hmm. You know, just just do the work you have to do to advance the project. Mm -hmm. um, for us, it's resource and a smaller program. You know, mm -hmm. geophysics. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. don't drill a bigger program looking for news releases. Right. Yeah. And do you have an expectation on on the resource that you'll put out? You've you've got extra drilling that's going to be included in that resource. You're at, I think it was 157 million tons already, right? Do you think that resource can grow, or is it that drilling is more going to be converting inferred to M and I? What, what what is your what is your your hope? Let's say your aspiration. I, I'm confident that we've significantly grown it. Okay. Um, and I would even say more than 50 percent at this okay. point. I mean, you can see the way we filled in at Chrome Mountain there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see now, uh, 12 of 14 holes, I think. 11 of 14 holes have been reported, mm -hmm. and the final ones are coming soon here. Mm -hmm. uh, that may well be our next dues release. Okay. Um, and then from there, yeah, we may well upgrade um, some of the inferred. Okay, but most of that one. drilling will, will be expansionary, then it'll Correct. be growing yeah. the resource. Okay. Yeah, as you've seen from our images there, we're, we're doing step outs to expand. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I don't know if there's any, if there is any questions. We could take one. I don't. I don't see anything. Okay. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Michael. Great update. Appreciate it. Thank I you. Think that it's, a, it's a great space to be in the battery metals for sure. In the U.S.? Was, yeah, yeah, in the U.S., obviously, of course. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Carrie, Michael, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.